sit down, please. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> we don't have time. Um, yeah, our our response system today is refusing to work, so we are going to go through this lesson without clickers, and uh, it's a sad thing because I actually love the clickers, um, and I know you do too. Well, uh, please, I hope you guys had a good weekend. Um, Remember, your test is coming up next week, so prepare for the test. It's going to be on Dynamics. Hopefully, before the end of this week, we'll, we will be done with Dynamics, and we'll move on to more greater things. So, <clears throat> the objective of today is to look at or study the following forces. We will look at the normal force. We will look at friction. And uh, we will solve examples on these two forces. Now, if time permits, which I know it won't, we will get into tension, but our objective for today will just be to look at friction and the normal force. Um, just as a recap of last week, we talked about gravity. And we said gravity is an attractive force that exists between two objects that have mass and quantitatively the force of gravity between two masses is given by g m1 m2 all divided by what r squared and this is known as the newton's law of what universal gravitation we talked about this law how it can be used or applied and specifically we talked about weight. Weight specifically is the gravitational pull of a planet on any object on it. Let me say that again. It is the gravitational pull of a planet on any object on it. Now we are on Earth, which means that the weight of an object on Earth is the gravitational pull of the Earth on that object. And we showed that the weight of an object is just the mass of that object multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity. And the last thing that I would like to touch base about weight was that weight is definitely a word of vector measured in what newtons and uh, always and uh, always acts vertically downwards and uh, always acts vertically downwards for example for example if we have a mass lying on a surface the weight of that object which acts at the center of gravity we talked about this will be vertically downwards mg on the other hand if we have an object lying on an inclined plane and you will see plenty of this the weight of the object will steer act vertically downwards now i will caution you to note that i'm going to orient my axis to lie along the plane this is my y axis this is my x axis here the axis still lie along the plane this is the x and this is the y i've done this so that I can analyze this problem on this inclined plane in the same way as I will analyze this block lying on this plane and it will make my analysis simple. 
and I recommend that you always do that. Do you understand that? So when you orient your axis, you could treat this mass just as if you are treating this mass. But in this case, the vertical will be what? Perpendicular to the plane. Now observe that this angle here is theta. I can prove that to you. But if you do it at home, I'll give you extra credit points. Now, if this angle is theta, it would mean, look up everybody, see that this is X and this is Y. You recognize that the weight makes an angle theta with the vertical and therefore the weight of the object can be resolved into two components. You will have its vertical component which is WY and you will have its horizontal component which is WX. Now looking at this triangle, pay attention everybody, looking at that triangle you will see that the sign of theta is opposite WX over the hypotenuse MG which would mean that WX is going to be MG the sine of theta is going to be MG the sine of theta and similarly cosine theta is equal to WY divided by MG which means that WY is going to be MG cosine theta is going to be mg cosine theta keep in mind keep in mind that we have oriented our axis to be along the plane therefore if i draw this object on the inclined plane like that where this is theta this is mg we can resolve the weight as mg cosine theta and the mg sine theta. Remembering that this angle is theta. Do you understand me? This will come in handy a lot and therefore if you have any questions please do not hesitate to ask all right now that being said if the next force that we will consider will be the normal force the normal force The normal force is a contact force exerted by one surface on another in physical contact in physical contact Understand that the normal force exists because surfaces resist compression. Think about it. If you sit down on a couch maybe in front of your TV what you would notice is that the couch will do what? sink downwards and you will feel a force upwards which is the normal force your weight is acting downwards the couch is exerting a force on you upwards because it is resisting being compressed do you understand that 
It's just like the springs of your matrix, they exert a force on you upward because they are resisting being compressed. That upward force is what we call the normal force. Now the most interesting fact about the normal force is that it is always, underline the word always, it is always at right angles. It is always at right angles to the surface in contact. It is always at right angles to the surface in contact. For example, if we have a mass lying on the surface, the normal force will be perpendicular to the surface. If we have a mass on a plane, the normal force will be perpendicular to the plane. Do you understand that? The normal force will be perpendicular to the plane. So at all times, the normal force is perpendicular to the surface. Keep in mind, let me do this. Look up everybody. The weight of, look, look up everybody. Let me make a comment. The normal force begins on the surface. The normal force begins on the surface. You should take note of that. The weight of an object begins at the center of what? Gravity. Mg. The weight begins the center of gravity. This is Mg. What you do realize is the weight of an object always acts vertically downwards. The normal force is always perpendicular to the plane or to the surface. That is important for you to remember because it will be handy in a little bit. Let us do an example. Example one. We are to determine the acceleration of a block of mass M sliding down a smooth inclined plane. We are to determine the acceleration of a block of mass M sliding down a smooth inclined plane. We have a block. The inclined plane is smooth, meaning that there is no friction force. The very first thing we need to do is draw the forces acting on the block. Look up, everybody. We have the weight of the block acting vertically downwards. And we have the normal force perpendicular to the plane. As usual, this is X. That is why you will also notice that this angle here is theta and therefore we can resolve the weight here. This will be mg cosine theta. Remember I said this will become handy and the force here is mg sine theta. That being said, the block is accelerating down the inclined plane. Let me choose my positive direction to be downwards. 
you would realize that by Newton's second law, the summation of F is equal to MA, which means that the summation of F in the X direction is equal to M times A in the X direction, and the summation of F in the Y direction is equal to A times is equal to M times A in the Y direction. This is a breakdown of Newton's second law in the X and in the Y direction. So if we apply Newton's second law in the, in the Y direction, you will recognize that the summation of Fy will be equal to N minus Mg cosine theta and all of this should be equal to zero. The reason it's equal to zero is because there is no acceleration in the y, y direction. Therefore, we can conclude that n is equal to mg cosine of theta is equal to mg cosine of theta. Now, in the x direction, we have the summation of fx. This will be equal to what? mg sine theta. This is mg sine theta minus zero. All of this should be equal to ma. What this implies is that ma is equal to mg the sine of theta. From this equation, the m's can cancel and the acceleration of the block down the inclined plane is just going to be g sine theta it's just going to be g sine theta which means that if we suppose that initially x naught is 0 and v naught is 0 then x which is going to be equal to x naught plus v naught t plus half a t squared this will be equal to what half g sine theta all multiplied by t squared so this is going to be the position as a function of what time similarly we know that v final which is just v is equal to v naught plus a t the initial velocity is zero this implies that v is equal to what g sine theta multiplied by what by t so if we draw a graph look up everybody let me ask a question is the acceleration of the block down the plane a function of time is it a function of time Look at this expression. It does it contain time? Of. Is the acceleration a function of time? No. It's not. So if we draw a graph of A against T, it will be a straight line. If we draw a graph of X against T, look at the graph. X, this is X. X is equal to what? All of this is a constant multiplied by T squared. So this is a parabola, right? You realize that X is a constant. Let us call that constant phi multiplied by T squared. So this graph will look like what? Like half a parabola. Like half a parabola. So it's going to be like that. And a graph of this is t this is x will look like this this is only true if we consider the downward direction to be positive if we consider the downward direction to be positive do you understand that Do you see with me? It's the final graph of V over T. 
Yeah, VT, thank you.